Elden Ring was one of the most hyped games as of late, and with the DLC coming soon, it only continues to grow. However, aside from two release date playthroughs, I feel I missed out on what this monumental sized game has to offer. I want to really dive into the experience and learn this game inside and out. And the best way I feel I can achieve this is by taking the game one area at a time, restricting myself to only the items I can scavenge within whatever given region I'm in, and using that to defeat each and every boss in the area. With some of the most brutal, unforgiving bosses lurking, this is an experience I can't afford to miss. This episode, we start off in Limgrave. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. Before we begin, let's set some ground rules. These will be the general rules of the series, however some areas will have specific rules which we will explain in deeper detail when it becomes relative. Rule 1 is the major one, all weapons, armor, talismans, spells, spirit ashes, and ashes of war must be acquired from the specific region we are in. I am giving myself a bit of a reprieve in allowing consumables and upgrade materials to be transferred from area to area. Rule 2 is Roundtable Hold is allowed to be used for weapon upgrades and to purchase consumables and upgrade materials. However, none of the items listed from Rule 1 that are found within Roundtable Hold can be taken out of the hub. Rule 3 is a region is not deemed complete until all possible bosses are defeated and all quest lines are advanced as far as possible. Rule 4 is respecking is allowed once unlocked, but it will be allowed only once per region. Lastly, not a rule, but this is a quick collage of how I divide the areas and what to expect. <laughs> I don't know what I created. Look at his chin. <laughs> that did not last long. And thus our adventure begins. Before we can even breathe, we run into a hater. My mom thinks I'm handsome. And thanks to Dark Souls 1 Silent Demon, I know running from the first boss is the optimal method. That was really close. Now talk about killing two birds with one stone, because not only did we find our queen, but we found the real MVP Torrent himself. Now that we have Torrent, our next objective is to get our first weapon. And as I said, this series is about learning and experimenting. So I wanted to choose a weapon I never really used, and while I was researching my options, one stood out to me. The Shamsher. Why did it stand out? Well, it had a really cool name. Anywho, this takes us all the way over to High Road Cave. Now of course our weapon's in the deepest part of this cave, past the wolves, some platforming, and these bat things. But after some lackluster gameplay, we made our way all the way down and acquired our weapon that we cannot use yet. Also, we died and lost our runes. What else is new? I took the liberty of spending two Moonlight Butterflies farming the Octopussy- Farming the Octopuses to get to our 13 decks for our weapon. Happy Gamer! Oh, I know exactly who I want to show this. <laughs> I was gonna try to talk about how I like this sword like it's really cool but I literally just didn't even have the time <laughs> oh my god this is gonna be fun remember when I was smart and avoided the tree sentinel well after killing Godric the true Elden Lord we were a little high on our horses after getting smacked back to reality we did a smart thing went to limb grave tunnel for upgrade materials However, I quickly found out our weapon was ass in here, so we need to get a striking weapon. 
I had two options, the old reliable Morningstar or super cool flail. I went to go get the flail, went all the way back, and then saw I needed 18 decks. <laughs> Damn it. So we left for the trek to go get old reliable. I killed Pumpkinhead on the way. He wrecked me twice. It was a lot of fun. Oh god, my, it's like my first boss I killed. Oh god, it's like my first boss I killed. How do I emote? Uh, god, I don't know how to play this game. Old Reliable. I'm convinced the Morningstar is good in every game it's in. We easily sweep through the area, collecting goodies and runes, and then come face to face with the Stone Digger Troll. Be careful with that name. Bad jokes aside, the Morningstar made this whole experience an absolute breeze. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why that was so funny. I'm surprised I didn't die. Holy waifu. So my next quote unquote goal was to get the round table hold so I can use my smithing stones to upgrade my weapon. But I believe to do that we need to either sit at a grace in Liernia or Kaled or kill Margit which of course is out of my reach right now. I was under the impression while recording this though that I just needed to sit at a lot of graces so I literally charted the top part of Limgrave, made a whole lot of friends and killed a butt pirate. In the bin, matey. Oh, hi, friend. Hey, yo, that's a lot of runes. Before I run into a rune bear and die, let me just save myself the trauma. In true Ricky fashion, I changed the plans entirely and decided it's time to finally get some armor. Limgrave doesn't offer a terribly huge selection of armor, especially free armor, but I did find a set I thought I'd thoroughly enjoy obtaining. Unfortunately, this arcane spamming tryhard is blocking the way and holy shit, this bring back some bad memories of release day PvP. What are you doing? Is he letting me 1v- Oh my god. I don't want a 1v1. Oh! Help, help, help. If there's a way to let you die, you're going to be dead. <laughs> oh God, that was terrible. Now for what we came for. We all know who's in this cave. Now, I am fully aware that what I am doing right here is actually going against one of my rules. However, I don't care. Fuck patches. We did what we wanted to do every single time this little prick pops up in our game. And not only do we get the satisfaction of ending his life, we actually get to make use of his armor and not so much his weapon. I thought his weapon was a little overpowered at plus seven, so we didn't use it except for one instance. That felt so fucking good.
We obtained the armor, but how about a helmet? My initial plan was the Golden Scarab, but we need to go to Liernia for that one, so scratch that. My next idea is going to get the Impat, which is a rare drop from these little buggers. They're located in multiple different dungeons around Limgrave, and luckily for us, there's a dungeon just north of here that's chock full of them. This is a 0.5% drop rate, so it is going to be a bit of a grind, but that's okay because I was fully prepared for it. Oh my god, let's go! Dude, that's like a 0.5% chance! <laughs> we look so good. <laughs> I don't know why, but that was like the most epic fight for such a no-name NPC. Now that we're fully equipped, it's time to do a little cleanup in Limgrave. We head to High Road Cave where we got our Sham Share, and along with a few other easy areas, we cleared those out mostly just to get runes to level up a few times before we head south to Weeping Peninsula. We really don't have a goal right now except just to continue to get stronger do other things. Ooh, that's a good one. Good thing I can't use smithing stones yet. Come here, you little bugger. Let me smack you around a little bit, little bugger. You little dung beetle, little bugging bugger. Sure glad these things don't despawn. What you got? Ooh, I'll buy that from you, my good So, Ooh, I want that too. We oh, got scale armor. Oh, this one has been pretty cool. I guess I didn't have to kill patches. Eh, but I wanted to kill patches. Plain crest wooden shield. That's our first shield. I might use that just because it's an actual shield. All right, map acquired. After messing around for like 8 moonlight butterflies, we found a cave and decided to go explore it. Little did we know this was the home of one of Elden Ring's most feared adversaries. Oh shit, it's this one. I'm not ready for this. Hmm. This was the instance I used Patch's spear. Now, there is no rule against the spear, it just goes against my pride and honor, but I felt it was the only chance we had to stand up to such a beast. Let's go! Oh my god, I feel like that's like not even a real boss, but ugh, fuck those things. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Spear. But unfortunately, you are way too good for this part of the game. This. Ugh. Actually, what I can do, I'm just gonna sit over here and wait for them to come to me. This is character development. Ricky and Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 would just, f ow, would just fight the enemies head on. Ricky in Elden Ring has become smarter, has become wiser. It's weird this thing doesn't have like a boss HP bar, but I'm 99% sure it's considered like a demi boss or whatever they're called in this game. You get the stat, yeah, you get the staff from it. Oh, you get a spell too, so yeah, it's definitely something. <laughs> the rickety shield! Excuse me. Oh wow, he gets wrecked. Jesus! Oh my god. Oh, thank God, my heart was pounding. 
I felt it was finally time to make a change. I realized I was relying on the Morningstar way more than the Shamshire, so I headed back to Limgrave to grab the Great Epe, a heavy thrusting sword, and I liked it a lot. We tried it out in the Erdtree Avatar over in the Weeping Peninsula, and our second attempt we managed to defeat it. Okay, yeah, this thing is really cool. This is really fun. And because we can only use this in the first region, we are absolutely going to take advantage of it against the easiest bosses in the game. Oh, you can get the Zweihander. Oh, that's so cool. I can't afford any of this stuff. I can afford these, though. I'll grab those. For the weapons I can't upgrade still. Continuing on the quest for strength, we come across our first ever jail. Now, I remember these always giving me a tough time, and I haven't necessarily gotten stuck anywhere yet, but two deaths to the same boss still makes this guy harder than the majority of bosses that I fought up to this point. go three tries i'm not even mad at that this guy's probably not the hardest but still these ever jail fights are always a little bit tougher than a lot of the other things it was almost time for us to make our way to morn castle what i consider to be the first actual level in our adventure we first fight the hardest boss in the game to get a useful talisman and then we fight the Knight's Cavalry for some runes and a really cool weapon that I'm not going to be able to use. Easy game. I think I'm starting to get good. With most of the easy bosses beaten, it's time for us to finally make a run at Morn Castle. There is a side quest here, but I just put that off till later. Oh. All right, awesome. Good news is we made it through the first part of this area. Bad news is we are literally dead. It may seem like nothing happened here and well, yeah, that's actually exactly what happened. But shout out to the boss arena. It's an underrated top 10 in my opinion. The boss serves as a nice challenge, it wrecked us a few times as most things in this game have, but we are able to triumph after a few attempts to obtain one of the coolest swords in the game. Probably one of the coolest swords in the game, and I'm probably not going to be able to use it. Sad scam game. So I was feeling pretty good, and I also ran out of other bosses to kill, so we had no choice but to take on Margit. Margit, the undisputed Elden Ring champion. The person who forced at least a million people to quit this game. We had two very close heartbreaking attempts, but no matter how many times this game knocks me on my ass, I'm gonna keep on getting up, running into that brick wall, because the drop of dopamine that I get when I see a FromSoft victory screen is undefeated.
Yo, let's go! Get wrecked, Margit, ya. I did naturally say it. Relax. Let's go! That is gonna be such a power spike. After the triumph of Margit and unlocking the abilities to upgrade our weapons, before we take on Stormfront, it's time to clean up what I consider to be the harder bosses of Limgrave. Well, first we gotta kill the easy ones I just straight up forgot about. <laughs> Dude, that's not okay. This thing is so strong. Okay, so what I've learned about this game is that you need to be very, very aggressive because every time I get pissed about dying to a boss and I come back and just go really aggressive to it, it just dies. So that's what I need to do. Our final foe in the peninsula is the most scary by far. I have never been good at fighting death birds. These are the things that I always struggle with and it was my first roadblock in the game. However, this particular death bird was all worth the woes of fighting once we finally defeated it and claimed our reward. Let's go! Oh my God, I was sweating. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I can use it. Ooh, that's kind of fun. What does this look like? I figured let's just take out the second death right bird while we're here and I'm just gonna let this clip play because this is absolutely beautiful. Ah oh, shit, I didn't mean to do that for her. That shit does a lot of damage, oh my. Wow, that does a lot of damage. Oh my god, that does a lot. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I wanted to s I wanted to smack him with the axe, not the torch. Oh my god. Wait a minute, so you're telling me this thing's gonna restore my FP while I can just cause I think it's spam this right? Oh my god, oh my god, this is not okay. This is broken. This is actually the most overpowered weapon in the entire game. The entirety of Elden Ring. Oh, it's the gi Go, Giant, go! This is my dream come true. Get him, Giant! Run after him! My voice is so shot right now, but I'm so happy. I can't even make my high-pitched voices. This is so sad. Yo, he's getting absolutely rinsed! Get rid- Oh, I thought I would kill him. Yeah, rinse the bat. Everything's just working for me right now. Hit him. Hit him. Dude, this weapon. This weapon right here. This is the most overpowered thing. Why is it so short? Actually, no, I take that back. It's average size. It's actually, it's actually massive. <laughs> Well, next on the agenda is the hardest boss in Limgrave. No, not the dragon, or Godric, or even the Crucible Knight, but the bell-bearing hunter. This guy is just on a different level. I had to break anime rule number one and get as much damage in when he was spawning. Is it cheesy? Absolutely. But this guy is an absolute menace. He's like a mix of Jax and Kenshi from Mortal Kombat. And he was easily, easily, our biggest challenge in the entire area.
Let's go! Oh, oh. Happy gamer! Oh, I can't do the voice! Sad gamer. How? I can't even see. Help me. I am in the wall. I am literally inside of the wall. Help? Sir? Sir? Yeah, come here. Come here. Ah, oh, he killed me inside of the wall. <laughs> he put me in the wall. He walked around and then ended my life. It's so crazy. So I've been playing this character for six and a half hours already. I beat Dark Souls 1 my last time playing it in eight hours, just casually playing through it. And I still have like seven field bosses before I go through Stormfront Castle. This game is big. Is it really worth it? <laughs> Good doggo. <laughs> oh, this isn't where you get um so let's see if how overpowered. Oh my god. <laughs> but I'm glowing yellow for whatever reason. Did I go Super Saiyan? I hear you, Alexander. I'm coming. Hello. Hello, friend. Let me get you on out of there. All right, he just wants me to keep on going. Let's go! I got the boss already starts out at half HP. Oh my, there's no way. Come here. Come here. <laughs> What's, wrong? What's wrong? Oh my god, dude, this is not right. <laughs> Happy gamer. Just like how I think the bell bearing hunter is the undisputed hardest boss, the hero's grave is the hardest area, at least for me. Funny thing is, it wasn't even the chariot that caused me any problems. The two scions over by the earth tree talisman were absolutely rinsing me, to the point I just swallowed my pride and ran by them. But that wasn't even the end of it. The night at the very end is by all means not easy. And for the cherry on top, the boss, the ulcerated tree spirit. Now, I just want to know whose idea it was for Statues of America to be a part of this game. And I want that person to have a very good day. I hope they wake up feeling on top of the world. I hope their back cracks in a way that just rejuvenates their soul. I hope they find $20 on the ground. I just wish the best for that person because thank you. Thank you so much. Ugh. I don't like that. Heal up. Yeah, I'm healing up again. Hee-yah! <laughs> uh, 
I'm happy. I usually struggle against those two. It's a lot of runes. Oh, wow. Next on the list are the remaining Everjails. Darwell wasn't a huge problem because, trust me, I've killed this guy at a really low level before. <laughs> I hope I gained some brownie points for not using the most overused weapon in this game. The Crucible Knight, however, is one I have vivid memories of struggling against, especially on the release day. And, well, I still struggle. Actually, Crucible Knight takes the cake for being the boss to wreck me the most on this young adventure. Let's go. Now, if I may ask you all a question. What do you think takes longer to kill? A legendary dragon using an axe the size of your d Or a butterfly using one of the strongest weapons in that game? Well, if you guessed the butterfly, you'd be right. The Moonlight Butterfly is undefeated. I'm never gonna let that die. Anyway, Agil wasn't much of a problem. Honestly, the biggest annoyance was he kept on flying away. And with my axe, it was kind of hard to hit his head. So I just ended up going for his feet a lot, which didn't do as much damage as I wanted to. But this axe is overpowered, so it didn't really matter anyway. Hey, first try. Alrighty, that takes care of all the field. Alright, that takes care of all the field bosses. It is finally time for Stormvale Castle. <sighs> as much as I want to kill this guy now, I'm going to keep him alive because he might be useful later. Oh, he sees me. Hit him while he's down! That guy is always so scary. I usually die to him once a playthrough, which is literally like two or three times. Oh, cool. Um, I don't. Oh, excuse me, sir. Um. <laughs> By any chance, could one of you kind gentlemen open the door for me? For some odd reason, it seems to be closed still. No, I'm not, I'm not jumping. No, no. I want to jump so bad, but I know I'm just going to end up dead. No, that's so lame, but that's cool. I always like double deaths. Oh, does anyone like fighting these things? I don't think anyone likes these things. Wow, look, a brave warrior and his best friend. I'm sure there's an unbreakable bond between those two. And that man would do nothing to his companion. I got trapped. Oh, hold on. I got to turn on the lawnmower. Come here. <laughs> I'm never going to get sick of that. This thing. I hope this thing isn't too hard. These things are kind of hard. He has a lot of HP. A little frisky. I, I actually got him. I'm proud of myself. Thought I was going to die there. Come on, troll. Let's go. Get wrecked, tree spirit. First try. Well, it's time for the head honcho. Godric, in my opinion, is one of the best early game bosses in any Soulsborne ring game. 
He may be easy for some of you Elden Ring vets, but for someone like me who's only killed him three times prior to this, he's definitely a fair bit challenging. However, luckily for us, we are literally as prepared as we could possibly be at this point. <laughs> this is the part where you fist the dragon. Let's go! Second try! Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh man, this man's holding a grudge. I've held some grudges before. But this man. <laughs> oh no, he called him a slug. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, hello there. I'm currently stomping a man out. Damn, I'm never going to be able to use that. Godric and along with the army of bosses in Limgrave have been defeated and all that was left for completion of Limgrave was to clear up the side quest of the area. And that does it. At least to my knowledge, Limgrave is 100% completed and about 169 Moonlight Butterflies. And while this episode may have seemed like a generic normal startup for Elden Ring, next episode we'll have to say goodbye to a lot of the gear that we've quickly grown fond of. But we discovered a lot of gems in Limgrave. Hopefully we can find a few more when we take on Liernia next time. <laughs>